and Chris Lafragola. The linebackers, Tony DeFiti, Todd Drew, Kevin Schroeder, and Al Smith. And the deep backs, Kenny Disco, Kevin Hughes, the corner, Tony Queen, the safety. Elizabeth, second and seven from the 40. Hand off to Rodney Carter, and he is stopped on the right side. Paul Gruchez leading the tackle brigade with some help from Todd Drew. On the first three offensive plays so far, uh, Elizabeth has come with an unbalanced line with a strong backfield set to the unbalanced. Union on the first play was caught short, and the second play they made their adjustment. They shifted the linebackers down, uh, one full man on the, in regulation to the offensive line, and they caught up with it. Now the, the surprise element is gone. Third and five. Ball just inside the 42. Baker to throw for the first time. Has time. Throws down the middle, and it's caught. Larry Bright wide open at the 30-yard line. Hangs on to the football. Has a big first down. It came with play action on that thing and caught the Union secondary flat-footed. We'll see the drop back after the, after the fake there into the line to two backs. Drops and throws, and a little post pattern coming in here from the wide receiver a low thrown ball but it was a nice reception on the play first and ten for the Elizabeth minute men at the Union 30 Elizabeth has come out fired up Baker calling signals we get some movement as the handoff goes to Carter and Carter gets two or three but I saw some movement on the left side of that Elizabeth line let's see what the call is they got dead ball foul of encroachment it looked like the left tackle had pre-started the legal procedure legal procedure against Union against Elizabeth it'll mark it back five let's check the officials working tonight's ball game the referee is Jack Taylor the umpire Fred DeMarco head linesman Frank Cagnasola the field judge Don DiLorenzo the back judge is Ron Merson the clock operator Ralph Falvo first and 15 for the Minutemen Baker on the season as you can see is thrown for nine touchdowns just under 600 yards Yes, gets a couple of yards, gets maybe to the 32, and that is all. Tommy Wilk on the bottom of that pile, and Wilk is a big one. He's 6'4", 240, and being recruited heavily by many of the outstanding schools across the country. A straight dive action on that play and an attempt to get inside the tackle, and they slid down the line, made good unit, uh, unit made good pursuit on the play and made the tackle. They had still had the quarterback covered on that play as well in the pitch. Well, we have a timeout with 8.56 to go in quarter number one. In the first game between Union and Elizabeth, well, there's the story. The Farmers won at 19-14. Union going up early, Elizabeth coming back, Union going up. It was a seesaw football game, not a classic football game in terms of execution. It was a big play kind of game, not indicative of these teams. That's true. Special teams had a lot to do in that... Uh a lot to do with the, the outcome of that ball game. In Union's case, they blocked two punts, as we mentioned earlier. Dick, you have a second down and 12 at the 32-yard line. Why, at this point of the football game, would Elizabeth want to call the timeout? I would imagine he wanted to make sure that everybody was thinking in the same terms out there in that huddle, that there, nobody was thinking uh, something other than what he wanted them to think. So he went out there and called the play for them. Donnie Soma, third year at Elizabeth. Doesn't want to lose his field position and a chance to go for three, anyhow. Second and 11 at the 32. Hunter gets a couple of good blocks, rather Carter, and runs into some traffic. Got close to the 26, and that was all. So it brings up a third down, a big third down situation. Rodney Carter has had a marvelous season. Over 1,000 yards, 16 touchdowns, and here he is. On this play, it's a toss sweep from an unbalanced line, and it looked like there was daylight going to break. It was a good slow down there by Drew, and then up comes uh, the outside linebacker, or Disco, the, the safety, to come up and make that tackle. Good hit by Ken Disco, 5'9", 160 pounds, a senior. This is third and six for the Minutemen, the ball at the 26-yard line of Union, out of the I formation. Baker hands the ball to Carter. Carter. Gets two or three, but does not have the first down. Again, on the bottom of that pile, Tom Wilk. With some help from Chris Lafragola. Fourth down. 
and two. All right, no field goal here because the wind is in their face. But the play has been sent in by Coach Soma. Teddy Porter brings the play in. They spot the football at the 22, 739. First quarter, no score. Elizabeth with fourth and two. Porter wide right. Rest of the club fairly tight. Montanez in the wing left. Handoff to Hunter. Hunter has a first down. Good blocking on that play by Devlin and Hernandez. They cleaned it out on that side with a lead block by Rodney Carter up through the hole off tackle. We see the replay of it here. We see a nice block in there by Carter. And then he just dives his way through with made uh, good good yardage on that play. Union was looking for the short yardage play, but they went in there with power and got it. Elizabeth is a strong, quick team. Hunter on the season, 482 yards, eight touchdowns. First down, Minutemen on the 18 of Union. Baker pitches back to Hunter, loose football. Minutemen hang on. Good break for Barry Hunter. The ball just popped back and he recovered. A loss of five on the play. It'll be second down and 15. But the big thing there, not losing the football. That's right. They still have an opportunity to do something with it. They've been able to pick up some yardage here. And they've got themselves back in decent field position. Could have been a lot worse if they'd lost possession. Lou Rotino, whose defense has been on the field since the outset of the game. 6.30 to go in the first quarter of play. Second and 15 Minutemen, wide right, Ted Porter. Full house backfield. Baker, options to the right, in trouble. Spins away from one man, spins away from a second. Gets back near the line of scrimmage before going down, and Paul Gruchez was there to make the tackle along with Lafragola and Todd Drew. Uh, this is not designed play, this is a sprint out pass. He's looking for action there to throw to the right hand side. He's almost tripped up in the secondary. A nice side step there as he avoids Drew and he's caught from behind by Gruchez. Good pursuit by Gruchez. This Union defensive unit has five shutouts this year. More importantly, they have three shutouts in a row. They have not allowed a point in 12 consecutive quarters. That's to get some pretty good football teams, Montclair and Westfield, in that stretch. Those are people who put some points on the board this year. Third and 15. This is Rodney Carter, and Carter gets to the 19, and that is all. It will bring up a fourth down, and about 11. Don Soma does have a pretty good kicker in Danny Takara. I don't know if he's going to send him on, though, at this point, as you mentioned, kicking into the win and it would still be about a 35-yarder. Big defensive play on that by Kevin Hughes, who fought off the block, retained his position, and Al Smith, who came from inside out to make the tackle on that play. Fourth down, Elizabeth will go for it. Montanez, wide to the right. Handoff goes to Carter. Carter at the five, touchdown! Great call. And Rodney Carter was able to break it for the six points, and Carter has touchdown number 17 on the season. Everybody was looking for the pass on this, and he comes with a counter trap back to the weak side of the formation, and there's just nobody left there once he breaks the line of scrimmage. You see him running down the center of the field here, and he's into the end zone before first contact. Tremendous offensive play by Elizabeth Minutemen. 4.48 left on the clock. Elizabeth had the football, seven minutes, 12 seconds. That's execution. Danny Takara will try the point after touchdown. Ball is placed down, the kick is up. The kick is perfect. 4.48 remaining, first quarter of play. Elizabeth has struck, seven to nothing. They lead the Farmers. At seven minutes and 15 seconds almost, that Union's defense was on the field, their offense was sitting on the bench, no, not, unable to get possession of the ball, and the Union is supposed to be the grinded out team. Although we did mention that Elizabeth can grind it out, but they also can explode with big plays. Two real big plays in that drive. The first offensive play of the drive and the last one. Impressive drive. 11 plays, 95 yards. Carter goes the final 20. Figure on two of those plays, 65 yards came on, on two of the, the first play and the last play. Well, we talked about ball control. 
Donnie Soma can't be any more pleased than that. No, they, they did what they had to do. They kept possession of the ball, kept it away from Union's grinded out attack, and they put points on the board at the end of a very fine drive. The 95-yard drive, you don't see that too often in high school football. That is the first points that Union has allowed in the first quarter all year. It'll be interesting. That'll mean it's the first time they've been behind in a ball game all year to start. Tony Queen drops back for the kick. It's fielded instead by one of the up men. Kevin Hughes returns the football to the 28, and that's where the Farmers will have it first and 10. So Union first and 10 from their own 28-yard line, and that's an interesting point, Dick. I think they've been behind, but never in the first quarter. No, never this early. Cosmo LaRusso leading out the Union Farmers. Tony Bibbo and Albert Smith, two big guys in the backfield. Mark Hersfeld goes in motion. Now Charlie Bohannon, the second tight end on the right. Pitch to Albert Smith. Smith turns and powers his way near the 33 or 34 yard line. The Union offensive line, Paul Gruchez, 220 is the left tackle. The left guard, Greg Curry, he goes 210. The center is Greg Abate, 190 pounder. Right guard, Todd Rather, Mike Giamella, he's 205. Tommy Wolf, the right tackle at 240. Second down and five for the Union Farmers. And off to Bibbo and Tony, very close to a first down, up near the 38-yard line. The Union backfield, Cosmo LaRusso starts at quarterback, a 5'11 senior. Tony Bibbo, the 200-pound fullback, and a good one. Tony DeFiti, left halfback, 200-pound senior. Al Smith, right halfback, 195 senior. Tight end, Chris Lafragola, 6'1 junior. And Tony Queen, the split end, 5'11, 180 senior. Timeout for a measurement. It'll be the third in inches or a first down. It looks to be a little bit short. So it will be third down and inches. Three twenty-nine on the clock. First quarter of play. Seven nothing, Elizabeth. Bibbo, first down, twist and turn to get to the 47. That's what Tony Bibbo is famous for, twisting and turning. 830 yards this year, 10 touchdowns, and also an outstanding blocker. Now here we see on the replay an unusual set that Union hasn't shown yet this year. Smith leads Bibbo through the off tackle hole and the same twisting style of running that Tony's done all year made him pick up the first down plus and a considerable chunk of yardage. First down Union at the 47. Check the Elizabeth defense after this play. Out of the eye. Smith. Loose football. Smith picks it up. Down the left side, across the 40, and out of bounds. Has a first down. It's the balance you were talking about, Bruce, when we were talking earlier today about the young man having tremendous balance. We see that his totals for the year, 1,190 190 yards and 16 TDs, 7.3 per pop, and that's why he's, he made 7.3. He just doesn't quit until he's down on the ground. Did he fumble that ball at all? No, he did not. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Progress was stopped, but his feet kept going. He never stopped uh, moving his legs, and he just spun off the pile and made the, the go. Elizabeth, a 5-2-4 defensive unit. We'll check it after this coming play. It is first and 10 at the 40. 2.46 to go. First quarter. Cosmo LaRusso calling signals, hands the ball off to Bibbo. Tony Bibbo hammers his way down near the 35. Elizabeth, as I mentioned, a 5-2-4 defensive alignment. The front five, Kevin Johnson, Terry Devlin, the nose man is Willis Wooten. The right side, Eddie Miller, Bernard Woodley. Two pretty tough linebackers, David Tobe and Rodney Carter, but they're most proud of their defensive secondary. Corners, Hernandez and Drayton. The safeties, Larry Bright and Wayne Pryor. Second and five for the Union Farmers at the 35 of Elizabeth. 
Here's Biba. Spins back to the line of scrimmage, and that was a very different set. Were they unbalanced, Dick? No, they, were, they gave the appearance of an unbalanced line. They told me before the game they were going to send both tackles to one side of the formation and come back with a slot on the other side of the formation, which in effect balanced the line up again. And that's what they did. They did it the first offensive play of the game and got big yardage on it. And this play, Elizabeth, with a quick pursuit, adjusted to it quickly and made the stop for no gain, or virtually no gain. You saw Elizabeth also has five shutouts this year. Four of their last six games have resulted in shutouts. This is a big third and five for the Farmers at the Minutemen 35. Smith gets two or three on his own. The hole closed quickly. Smith got to the 32. It will be fourth and two. And no doubt, Lou Rutina will go for it here. A little bit of a mix-up in the backfield. There was a collision on the handoff between LaRusso and Smith and uh, destroyed the timing of the play. And once he got to the line of scrimmage, the hole did close, as you mentioned, and the was, timing was broken on the play. But he did fight for considerable yardage and made it close enough to go for it on fourth down. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Elizabeth leads Union 7-0. Farmers have fourth and two at the 32. Smith gets the pitch out in trouble. Goes down. Big pursuit, and Ernie Hernandez got him first. Kevin Johnson and Ernie Hernandez were there to make the stop. A flag is down on the play. Elizabeth came at them in the short yardage situation with a nine-man line and, and two linebackers. And uh, it looks as though we might have had motion there on somebody uh, on the Elizabeth side. I thought maybe they might have stepped in a neutral zone. Clip that. against Union. That'll be negated. It will be a first well, and ten for the Elizabeth Minutemen. What I saw, I didn't see. So Elizabeth gets the football back from their own 38. Their defense is held, and with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter, they lead 7-0. Touchdown by Rodney Carter, a 20-yard run at 448 of quarter number one, capping an 11-play, 95-yard drive. So Jerome Baker brings the Minutemen to the line of scrimmage with 27 seconds left in the first quarter. Montanez gets the call on the quick opener. Wilk makes this stop. Montanez gets to the 42 or 43. The Z-back, as Don Soma calls it, doesn't get the ball a lot, Dick. He considers her, uh, Montanez his outstanding blocker, but he's got some pretty good stats on the year as well. Yes, he does. And But from this unusual set that they're running, the unbalanced line with the strong set of the backfield to it, he becomes the primary ball carrier when they're going to go inside. That is it. Quarter number one is history. The score from Giant Stadium, Elizabeth 7, Union nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. Back at Giant Stadium, Elizabeth with the football, second and five at their own 43. This is Rodney Carter, flags are down. Carter across the 50, across the 45. Finally brought down by Kevin Schroeder as he gets down to the Union 40, but hold everything. Flags down all over the place, and usually where that flag was thrown, it will be against Elizabeth. A legal motion against the Minutemen, and that will call the play back. It looked as though the back that went in motion had turned up field prior to snap, and uh, he was the lead blocker on the play. That's why it was so successful, I guess. Injured player on the field for Union, I believe it may be Tony Defeaty, and it is. Defeaty's had trouble all year long. He's been bothered by a hamstring. And you know what a nagging injury that can be, a hamstring or a groin, and you can be playing in and out. I expect to see Defeaty back. Well, he's ready to play right now, but according to the rules, he has to come out or they charge him with a timeout if he stays in. So Dwayne Dabney comes in, the six-foot, 170-pound senior, number 37 at the left outside linebacker position. He's no stranger there, Bruce. He's back up to Al Smith as well the out at the outside position. Second and 11 for Elizabeth. Out of the eye. Handoff goes to Barry Hunter. He is tripped up in the backfield. Good penetration by Todd Drew. Yeah, the Union changed their defense. They went out of the traditional 4-4. They went to an overshifted defense onto that side where Todd was. He was up on the line of scrimmage and made the deep penetration here, submarine the play, took down the lead blocker and the back carrying the ball. You don't always have to make the tackle, Dick, with your hands. It has a lot to do with your body and the kind of position you end up in. Well, Union is a great position defense team. They'd like to get the penetration on a play like that. They're not usually a penetration team, however. 
Third and 11. Baker hands off to Carter. Carter against the grain, has a first down across the 50, across the 45, and Rodney Carter looks awfully impressive in this first half, down to the 42. All right, that's the second time they run that play. The first time it went for the touchdown. They came back with that counter off a quick pitch fake, and on it, they over the Union middle linebackers all went to the pit, pitch fake side, and he came back on the counter step and ran through a cross block between the tackle and guard of Devlin and Hernandez, who executed as well as they did on a touchdown. Al Smith slowed it down coming from behind, and the safety man came up, Kevin Hughes, to make the tackle. First down at the Union 42. Baker to throw. Looking long for Ted Porter. It's incomplete. Porter running a zig out and down pattern on the right side, and Baker just missed putting it on the money. On that, on that pattern, uh, Tony Queen and uh, Ken Disco had double coverage on him, and they left Kevin Hughes alone to cover the whole rest of the field. He had three quarters of the field to himself to cover. Second down and 10. 10.37 to go, second quarter, Elizabeth leading 7-0. Lou Rettino very concerned right now. Baker sends Larry Bright wide left. Wing eye, handoff goes to Carter straight up the middle. Rodney getting a couple of yards. Paul Gruchez at the bottom of that pile for the Union Farmers. Also there was Todd Drew. It brings up a third and nine. All right, they went to the well for the third time on that same play, that quick pitch fake and the counter coming back off it. That time, Gruchetz stayed at home and Drew got there in good support position. Official time taken on the field. Some type of equipment problem with an Elizabeth player. And now we're set to go. Like to see time of possession statistic. It's got to be almost three to one in favor of Elizabeth. Baker, quick drop back, throws, and it's intercepted by Hughes. Kevin Hughes across the 40, across the 43, and gets down near the 45. Barry Hunter made the tackle. Great, great hands on the part of Kevin Hughes pulling down that hard thrown pass. On that play, he just overthrew the receiver. He had Larry Bright on the look, and it's a sprint right, and he's coming to throw a look-in pass to Bright coming down on a slant toward the post. He just overthrew him a bit. The pass was ahead. Now it turns into a foot race. Disco's got the ball, and away he goes. Or Kevin Hughes has the ball. Excuse me. Disco was on the other side on the play. All right, we just missed the block. Otherwise, he might have picked up considerable more yardage. A big play for Union, though. Gets him out of a hole, puts him into a first down situation with good field position to start. So Kevin Hughes with a big interception. And the Union Farmers have good field position at their own 45, 9, 29, second quarter of play. Here's Bibba spinning away from one man. Gets down to the 46, but flags are down on the play. Oh, he had that almost broken. He ran into the back of his lead blocker, Tom Wilkin, in an attempt to spin out of a tackle. But I think the calls against Union, yes, blocking below the waist. On this play, we see the Union offensive line fire off the ball. The lead block there by Smith kicks him out. He spins off the first tackle, runs into, the, into Tom Wilk, and is caught from behind. But it was no avail anyhow because we had the illegal block. So that penalty will move the ball all the way back to the 30-yard line, blocking below the waist, one of the new rules this year in high school football. It will now be first... And a 25. Lot. A lot, yes. Offensive play so far in this football game. Elizabeth 17, Union 8. Mark Hersfeld goes wide to the right. Kevin Hughes wing right. Out of the eye. LaRusso rolls to his left. Looks. Throws it up in the air. Bibbo has the catch. Pivo gets to the 45, but LaRusso threw a pass that he really shouldn't have thrown. He was being hammered as he threw it, and they were very fortunate that it was complete. The only thing that made it complete was that Tony Bibbo was alone. He could have stretched out and taken a nap right there. Nobody was covering him within 10 yards of him on that play. That was that waggle pass where the fullback releases a short underneath the wide receiver on that side, and one of Union's favorite for a long time. 
A big pickup on the play. There's a look on the sidelines of the man that made this drive possible, Kevin Hughes. Came up with that big interception. Also alternates with Defeaty at the left halfback position. Second and nine, a pickup of 16 in that play. LaRusso hands to Bibbo. Bibbo straight up the middle, gets close to the midfield stripe. And it will bring up a third and five. Good call. When you get second down, you know, you don't want to go for the home run. You want to give yourself a possibility of getting third and five or third and four. And Union picked up 20 yards in two plays. Now they have a third and five, which is makeable. Well, from previous games that we've seen, Union's in four down territory once they get the ball and outside their own 20. 7.37, second quarter of play. Elizabeth, seven, Union, nothing. Union goes with two tight ends, Lafragola and Bohannon. Gordon Jones in motion, cuts back against the grain and is stopped. Good hard hit by Ernie Hernandez. Hernandez plays the corner, but he hits like a linebacker. Well, they've thrown everything at Union, all kinds of blitzes. Here we see a nice st uh, stop action there. If you get into the off-tackle hole, but coming from behind, behind there, Devlin, and the cornerback coming up, making a good hit on the play. Devlin made beautiful pursuit course down the line on that play. Don Soma and Jerome Baker talking to each other. And we got a timeout. Clock shows 6.51 to go in the first half. And Elizabeth leading 7-0. Don Soma, 18-10. and 10. He's 9-1 and one this year. Was 4-5 and five last year. 5-4 and four in his first season. He's a fiery kind of coach. And he's going out there to talk to his unit. This is, this is the situation that Union wanted to avoid. They wanted to avoid punting in, in a long yardage situation where Elizabeth can get their dynamic duo back there and run that punt back on them. It's the kind of thing that's hurt them in the past and it hurt a lot of teams this year. Fourth down and five. Charlie Bohannon goes back in punt formation. That face says it all right now. You can tell he's losing. Elizabeth leading seven. Zip Bohannon back in punt formation. A dangerous duo awaiting this punt. Larry Bright and Rob Strong. Watch out. It's taken by Bright. At his own 25, gets to the 26, and a flag goes down the play. I won't speculate. It might... Uh, they're calling on the, on the white captain here, so we'll just see what the play is. Probably a low block. Face mask. Face mask Face against mask. Union, and that'll be a big one, 15. So it will give Elizabeth excellent field position, plenty of time in the second quarter. And when you have that 7 nothing lead, it makes running offensive plays that much easier. So I was wrong again, is what you're trying to tell me. I shouldn't have speculated, and I got hung up again. Got caught, and I'll never do it again. You've learned your lesson the hard way. Well, you always only report the facts. I learned that from Jack Webb, too. Baker leads out the Elizabeth Minuteman. First and 10 from their own 41 out of the wing eye. Handoff goes to Hunter, and Barry Hunter turns his way up near the 45-yard line. down and some problems up Zimmer's headset but we'll get to that as soon as possible 45 wide to the left side Larry Bright out of the wing eye again handoff strong inside the 45 gets up near the 50 and that's where he has run out of bounds out of bounds, yeah, here I'm right back again, Bruce. Oh, a lot of people were saying, great, what a great day this is. The thing went dead on the old guy. But they picked up good yardage on that sweep there off tackle. I'd like to thank Phil for the, his tremendous help on that, Bruce, for, for bailing me out. He found a loose connection. Third and two, Teddy Porter wide to the left side. Rest of the club is tight. Hand off. Carter. Good second effort and has a first down. Rodney Carter is not only quick, 
but he is strong. A nice change of direction there. He was stopped in the backfield by, by Kevin Schroeder and broke the tackle. Here we'll see him go outside this block now. He's bouncing. Schroeder has him, and he just breaks the tackle and gets a good yardage for the first down. So the Elizabeth drive continues. The ball to Union 48. 532, second quarter of play. Elizabeth has dominated this first half of play. Larry Bright goes wide to the right. Carter and Montanez in the backfield. Motion to the right, pitch goes to Carter. Carter turns it upfield, inside the 45, down to the 43. And Elizabeth is controlling the line of scrimmage. That's, that's the point I was going to try to make before when I lost my audio, that, that the offensive surge of the Elizabeth line at the point of attack has been tremendous. They've blown Union back three and four yards before the back has even made contact with the defense. Second down and five. Union wants a timeout. A timeout taken here by Lou Rutino, I would think, to try to get this defensive unit together. You don't want to go into the locker room down two touchdowns. Oh, they don't want to give up another one now. Well, the last five times these ball clubs have faced each other, the decision has been the same. And it has been all Union. 19 to 14 earlier this year. 13-7 last year in 79, a game seen on TV3, 35-14 in 78, 17 to nothing, and in 77, 17 to six. But as Don Soma says, none of that means anything. This is a new football game, we're a new team, and we're ready to win. Well, this is the second season again, as we mentioned before. What is Elizabeth doing offensively here in this first half, and what are they doing so successfully? They're out quicking Union's defensive line. They're getting off the ball very, very quickly and getting out there, and their backs have run well, and on first contact, they're doing something extra. They hit and spin, keep their feet moving, find daylight. They've done a fine job. Now, Union backs have done as good a job, but they have, don't have the burning speed once they get into the secondary that the Elizabeth people have. Second down and five at the 44. Split backs. Baker pitches back to Carter. Rodney cuts inside the 40, cuts inside the 35, and has a first down. Now, on that particular play, the lead back coming out of the backfield, a little the Union outside linebacker back a good seven or eight yards and gave the Union the or Elizabeth the corner on the play before the back even had his hands on the ball. Carter made a great move. He started out going to the outside, cut back to the inside. He knows how to pick up his blocking. Well, the Union's defense is not giving the penetration down the line, or excuse me, the pursuit down the line that we've seen in the, from the last two ball games. They're being handled and controlled at the point on the line of scrimmage, and the daylight occurs inside of the cutback. Rodney Carter, the workhorse in that Elizabeth backfield. Ten rushes tonight, 70 yards, and he has the touchdown. That is a big first half of play. Don Soma calls a timeout. 4.37 left in the second quarter, and our score, Elizabeth 7, Union nothing. Don Soma has led this club this year. They're talking about it as one of the best in Elizabeth history. Of course, you'd have to go back to the glory years with Gil Chapman when the school was Thomas Jefferson. The last time they had a club that was as explosive as this team, nine and one this year. And you can see nine and nine in his first two seasons. But Elizabeth people feel Don has turned the program around. One thing you have to say about his program, they are hardworking people. Oh yes, they work hard all year round. Go back to that Chapman team, the fellow on that team also did pretty Richie well Woods. with Richie Wood. That's right. First and 10 at the 35. Elizabeth's drive continues, but they may have taken too much time. Flags down on the play. Offsides called against Elizabeth. May have broken the neutral zone. Now, Elizabeth is breaking the huddle and coming to the ball a lot slower, Bruce, than they did in the first quarter. 
they don't they just don't have that enthusiasm coming out of the huddle like they did before they're ready to knock down the wall when they when they came out earlier but they're a little bit slower now so with a player lining up in the neutral zone you can see penalties not much of a factor so far in the game it is first and 15 back at the 40. Montanez quick opener inside the 35 to the 33. Javier Montanez six foot a half inch 195 pounds a member of the National Honor Society, 614 yards this year. He has scored six touchdowns. Well, Todd Drew is beside himself. He had that play in the backfield and just missed the tackle, flat out missed the tackle. I don't know whether he recognized it by key or he just diagnosed it or we just was plain lucky on the play, but he was there and had the chance and he was very upset with himself for missing it. Second down and six at the 32. Four minutes, first half. And it's been a long second quarter because of a lot of timeouts and whistles. Baker, again, Montanez powers his way close to a first down, maybe short by a yard. Do you notice that Union isn't getting a lot of play from their outside linebackers, and usually in a football game, that's where 30 or 40 percent of their tackles will come from? This, this offensive set that they're running right now is designed to keep the, the ball away from the outside linebacker. It stretches the defense. It causes the onside outside linebacker to take a wider alignment and negates the pursuit of the backside outside linebacker. Puts all the pressure on the two inside guys. Third down and a long yard. 3.15 second quarter of play. Baker, barking signals, options to the right, keeps the ball, spins away from one man, has a first down. Baker at the 20, and out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Clever ball handling by Jerome Baker. Clock is stopped at 3.05, and it is a first down for the Minutemen. I'll tell you, as great a run as he made, that is not a touchdown for the off defensive play of one person. Here we see down the line, he fakes the handoff, and you'll see a play outside by Ken Disco, who just neutralizes everybody and holds his area and forces the ball to go to the outside in time for the defensive secondary to catch up in pursuit. A great run, but a great defensive play right there by Disco. First and 10, Elizabeth at the 15. Wing eye. Fumbled momentarily, Hunter has it, and Hunter goes down. And there's a tackle by Albert Smith. That's probably his first tackle tonight, and that's the outside linebacker we had talked about. Hunter had some trouble handling the football, but did manage to get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, I'll tell you, Union defense did a real fine job on this. It was mishandled, and it could have caused people to come in and over-penetrate in pursuit, but they didn't. They stayed right at the line of scrimmage, built the fence, and let him come to them. And they were waiting when he did. Nice play. Second and 10 at the 15. 2.30 to go. First half. Baker rolls to his right, looking for Larry Bright. Hits the up man instead, and it is a first down, or close to another first down for the minute man. Right out of the end balance, they came with a sprint out to that side and caused the outside linebacker to, didn't know which way to come. He had to come and play the quarterback right here, and it left the slot back open underneath. Willis Wooten, the man to pull the ball down, Wooten in as a split end, and he put the ball right in his hands. He has a first down at the three-yard line. 2.06 to go. Second quarter of play. Elizabeth controlling the football game. Handoff goes to the second man through, and Carter is in for a score. He went in like a corkscrew. Rodney Carter has his second touchdown, and Elizabeth has a 13 to nothing lead. And another impressive drive. As he, watch this, folks. As he takes his hand off, he just, just keeps turning and spinning and spinning. And there's another spin going in here. And he made it with the second spin into the end zone. Great offensive surge by the line and a nice run by Carter. They've been impressive. They're big, strong backs with excellent speed. Danny Takara in for the point after touchdown. Ball is placed down. The kick is up. It is through. It hit the post. It goes through. That's a three-corner shot there, three cushions, and he made it. Elizabeth with everything going right in this first half of play. Lee Jr. by a score of 14 to nothing as Rodney Carter gets his second touchdown of the night, his 18th of the season. 
This is, as we mentioned before in our earlier telecast from here, this, this field doesn't give the advantage to a speed team. And Elizabeth is utilizing that speed advantage, running well outside and running well on dive plays and counters. Another impressive march. Nine plays, 59 yards. They're getting their yards in chunks. And Carter goes three yards for the six points. Ball control is one thing, but they're getting ball control and they're also gaining yards in chunks. Instead of three or four a pop, they're getting seven, eight, nine a pop. Yeah, and, and they haven't even used their special teams here yet. Tony Queen handles the ball at the five, across the 15, across the 20. Flags are down on the play. Yeah, we had an encroachment on the kickoff. Somebody was eager on that play and was a good yard ahead of the kicker on, the, on coming downfield. Only the crowd noise kept the referee from hearing the, the whistle blown by the official here at the 40-yard line. Minute 52 left. Still time in the second quarter of play. And you know, in basketball, Al McGuire used to always say one of the big times in a ball game is that minute before the half and a minute after the half. And here is a good situation, an interesting time because Union doesn't want to go into the locker room down three touchdowns. And on the other hand, they might be able to put a score on the board and cut it to one. So this next minute 52 is not going to be run them into the ground and see what happens in the second half. I would expect something to happen or at least try to happen. Well, there's two ways of looking at it. Try to put some points on the board, or the other thing is, if you don't have field position, don't Play give the other guy, don't the other, let the other fellow put points on the board. I'm sure Tony Queen would like to break one here. Hernan Stiglinu kicks it off and puts it into the end zone. Hernan Stiglino, a 6'3", 193-pound junior, kicked off that time instead of Danny Takara, and he put it into the end zone. Well, that avoids the uh, avoids the, the return that we were talking about. Now Union's going to have to earn it from 80 yards. Don't forget, we've got college basketball coming up this week on TV3. The unbeaten Seton Hall Pirates entertain the Manhattan Jaspers. You can see a Wednesday night at 10.30 p.m. only on TV3. Union from their own 20. Cosmo LaRusso, the quarterback. Fullback Tony Bibbo. Tail is Albert Smith. LaRusso rolling to his right. Looking, throws incomplete, intended for Bibbo, and so the clock stops with a minute 48 to go in the first half. All right, Dave Tobe, the good inside left inside linebacker, had good coverage on the play. He was in good position to make the play. Had uh, Bibbo caught the ball. Good pressure on the on Larusso on that. Even though he faked to Smith first, uh, Elizabeth didn't buy it. They had pressure on the quarterback. Second down and ten. Union has not been able to do very much offensively. Gordon Jones in the wing right. LaRusso bootlegs to the right. Across the 20, across the 25, flags down as LaRusso churns near the 30-yard line. I think we have blocking below the waist again on Union's offensive line. Blocking below the waist against Union. Tell you, LaRusso made a nice run of that last play. Yes, he did, but the block that set him free was the one that was the illegal block. Unfortunately, the fellow who threw it was doing a real hustle job. He's trying his best to get that quarterback free. The quarterback was just about to get popped on that play when he threw the block. He cost him 15 yards, but he might have saved him a quarterback. So it'll be half the distance, and they'll bring the ball back near the 9 or 10 yard line. And here's the time you, you might want to be a little bit conservative. Yes, now it's time for the quarterback sneak and lay on the, on the ball. The quickness and speed and recovery of the Elizabeth defense has been outstanding, Bruce. Each team with one timeout remaining. Second and 20. Out of the eye, LaRusso calling signals. Hands the ball to Albert Smith. Smith racked up. And again, Hernandez came up to make the pop. Eddie Miller was also on the bottom of that pile. And Rodney Carter came over to help on the tackle. It brings up a third down at about 17. 
And those people who came down and didn't penetrate, they came down the line of scrimmage, fought off the blocks. You can see Miller right there stuff and do a nice job along with Hernandez, the uh, linebacker, or the safety man. Miller did an impressive job on that play. Here's a big story in the football game. No wonder why it's 14-0 Elizabeth Union. One for three on third downs. Elizabeth five for seven. They won't try to convert this third down. Third and 18. 39 seconds to go. Bibbo across the 20. Bibbo gets back to about the 24. He'll still be six or seven yards short. And Elizabeth now uses their final timeout in this first half. We'll take a short break. We'll come back with more football action from Giant Stadium in just a moment. 28 seconds to go in the first half. Elizabeth leading Union 14 to nothing. Charlie Bohannon goes back in punt formation on fourth and six for the Union Farmers, hunting to a couple of dangerous young men. Robbie Strong and Larry Bright. Bohannon hits it straight down the field. Handled by Bright at his own 45. Bright goes down immediately. Good coverage by the Union Farmers. And again, a flag on the play. In the pre-game conversation with, with the Union assistant coaches that I know for a long period of time, they told me they'd worked very, very hard on their, on their punt coverage team and their kick coverage team, and I can see why. They did an excellent job. Although, we remarked in the last two games they didn't look like they were doing a bad job then, but Elizabeth is a, presents a special problem down there. Blocking below the waist, again the call, this time against Elizabeth in setting up the return. 16 seconds still on the clock. And they move the football all the way back to the 30-yard line. You know, we went all season, Bruce, with hardly seeing that play, that, that penalty called, and now we've had three in one game, in one half. In the last game of the 1981 New Jersey interscholastic season. They're still getting the kinks out. Yes, yes. Well, maybe this group of officials has never called that one all year, and they figured they, you know, they... Well, they haven't blocked below the waist all year, and they want to no. they want to get it done now. Well, this is a hustle game. Everybody's trying to do it a little bit extra. That's, that's the point to make. Aggressiveness makes for penalties but every coach wants to see aggressive play. And the end of the first half has come. The Elizabeth Minutemen, in an awesome performance, lead the Union Farmers 14 to nothing at halftime. We'll take a short break and I'll come back and talk with Bob Canavy, the Executive Secretary of the NJSIAA. I spoke to him earlier today and you'll see that talk in just a moment. It's third football game between Union and Elizabeth, and joining me to chat is Bob Canaby, the executive secretary of the NJSIAA. And Bob, this concludes a marvelous football season. What are your thoughts on finishing up here at the Meadowlands? Well, Bruce, it's always a pleasure to be here at the Meadowlands. We think it's a combined treat for both the fans who can come and also the coaches and the players, certainly, to have the ex this experience. This is the second weekend that the playoffs were held here. You started out with two triple headers back in the weekend of November 21st and 22nd. Now you finish up with a triple header. What are the positive things that came out of those football games, and what are some of the negative things? Well, the positive things, I think, Bruce, are what we just expressed, that essentially the experience of the young men and women and all of the support units and the fans and coaches who can take part in conducting their activity in this tremendous facility. Uh, the other aspects of it, of course, one of the disappointing things is that we can't get more teams in, obviously. Uh, this was the first time in the history of the playoffs and coming to Giants Stadium that we've run into a Giants home game, uh, which precluded our putting three more games in uh, tomorrow. But uh, nevertheless, we've been very, very pleased with all the support that we receive, and we know it's a great experience for the kids, and we hope to continue it as best we can. I know it's difficult to please everyone, but in general, were some of the Group 1 and Group 2 schools disappointed that they didn't have more of an opportunity to play here? Yes, there's no question about that. Throughout the history of the playoffs, we really only had one Group 2 uh, championship played here, and it certainly is something that we're going to have to look at both as an association and, and the football committee in general, that uh, the numbers of schools who do have outstanding teams that are on a smaller scale in terms of numbers uh, as we classify schools are certainly have to, going to have to be given some consideration in the future. Bob, do you think they'll come back here next year for the high school football playoffs? 
Well, that's another thing that I think we're going to have to take a look at. Obviously, uh, money is becoming tighter not only for local school boards, but for our association uh, across the board. And uh, generally, it, it comes down to a situation where we have to provide as much service as we possibly can within the confines of the, of the dollars that are available and the restrictions that are placed both upon us and upon our member schools. We can't become a, an economic burden for our member schools, and uh, it's incumbent upon us to try to maintain ourselves as solvency as possible. So it's something else that we're going to have to look at, but our intent is certainly to try and work it out to continue. We're, we're hopeful, I think, of also uh, attempting some uh, private sponsorship and some corporate support for this very, very worthwhile activity for young people in the state. You've got some exciting things coming up this winter. The conclusion of the winter season will be held, actually, the basketball playoffs at the Meadowlands Arena, and again, you're utilizing the facilities of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. Your thoughts on that? Well, that's correct. Uh, these are, of course, New Jersey's finest facilities, and we're very, very pleased with the cooperation that we receive from the uh, organization and from those who sponsor it. Uh, Bob Mulcahy and Laurie Smith and Bill Barnhill, and amongst others, Les Unger, etc., have all been extremely cooperative with us, and we're very pleased to be able to highlight New Jersey athletes in this facility. This coming March, as you said, will be the first time that we're putting all of our state finals back under the same roof, so to speak, since the Atlantic City days. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, a Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, whereby both girls and boys finals will be played in the new beautiful Burn Arena. I know there's a strong commitment by the Meadowlands, by the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority to New Jersey Athletics. How about the colleges, Princeton and Rutgers? Will certain events be held there this year? And what is their commitment to New Jersey Athletics at the high school level? Well, there too, we've been very, very fortunate in that everyone's been very cooperative with us. We will continue, for example, to host our wrestling uh, finals at Jadwin Gym. We will also hold our indoor track finals and meet of champions at Jadwin's beautiful facility. And we have equally as well already set some dates to hold some uh, section finals and semifinals in the Rutgers uh, complex. Well, I know if they held the football playoffs any later, you and I would be standing <laughs> here with a little bit heavier coats. It does get chilly. Yes, it does. I think we lucked out, too, because yesterday's prediction was for two or four inches of snow, and even the guy upstairs is taking care of us this year. One final question. You've been at the helm now of the uh, NJSAA for well over a year. What are your thoughts about the association and anything we should look for in the future that's different? I think uh, if we have any key goal as far as the 80s are concerned with the association, we have to become a, a more receptive and service-oriented organization to our member schools. And I think we have to do that both from a service aspect of providing worthwhile programs for schools, for their coaches and their staffs, as well as becoming a <clears throat> excuse me, more fiscally manageable in terms of the kinds of things that we're able to do for schools. Uh, it's a great job. It's probably uh, uh, the greatest thing that's happened to me in my career. Thank you very much for taking the time and sharing thoughts with us, and good luck in the future. Thank you, Bruce. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Bob Canaby, the Executive Secretary of the NJSIAA. We'll take a short break. Back with the second half kickoff between Union and Elizabeth in just a moment. Forever. We're back at Giant Stadium in the final of North Jersey Section 2, Group 4. The score at the end of the first half of play, Elizabeth 14, Union nothing. The scoring summary is like this. It's all Elizabeth, of course, and it's all Rodney Carter, who had a marvelous first half of play. Elizabeth goes over with 4.48 left in the first quarter on Carter's 20-yard run, and Dan Takara hits the point after, and it's 7-0 Elizabeth, capping an 11-play, 95-yard drive. Then in the second quarter, a minute 57 on the clock, and Elizabeth makes it 14 to zip as Carter goes in from three yards out, and Takara hits the point after capping a nine-play, 59-yard drive. Now the first touchdown, Rodney Carter, Dick, on a beautiful counter play, and you describe it. Uh, here we see the cross blocking occurring, and Carter, if they fake a pitch right and come back with Carter to the left, he does a beautiful job. The offensive line clears it right out. He's all the way down through the end zone and gives a high stepper right there and gets into the end zone for the first score. And the second touchdown capped another beautiful drive, and we'll look at it from the end zone. Well, this is an opposite type play. They run with him as a, as a lead blocker. To, uh, and he hits in, in the backfield, spins off, and makes another spin move right here and keeps his legs going and drives and makes a beautiful touchdown run. Great credit to the young man on that play. The statistics in the first half were all one-sided as well. All Elizabeth, you can see 10 first downs to just two for Union. Rushing yards, Elizabeth 154, Union 57. Passing yards, Elizabeth with a slight edge there. Total yards, you can see a big advantage to the Minutemen in offensive plays. Elizabeth running off twice as many plays 
as the Union Farmers, and you can't score without the football. That's about it. That passing yard for Union is deceiving. That was the one pass that was completed to Bibbo, who, who the throne was thrown and hung in the air forever, and he ran into it and caught it. Donnie Soma, third year head coach of Elizabeth. He's done a marvelous job. He says they stress academics, they stress doing well and other things besides football. They constantly are reminded of the young men's progress by progress reports and other things. And he has really put a lot of time and effort into the Elizabeth Minutemen program. Lou Rutino, well, he goes into the locker room down 14, looks a little concerned, obviously. Offensively, he hasn't been able to do too much. Lou, in his fifth season at Union High School, has lost only, I believe, seven games in five years. But he is really in for a tough one tonight. Tony Queen drops back deep. And Elizabeth will kick off to begin play in the second half. And another booming kick by Hernan Stiglino. Stiglino putting his second kick into the end zone. And Union will come out first and 10 from their own 20. The Union offensive line is Paul Gruchez, Greg Curry, Greg Bate, Mike Chiarmella, and Tom Wilk. The tight end is Chris Lafragola, the split end Tony Queen. Quarterback Cosmo LaRusso, fullback Tony Bibbo. The tailback is Albert Smith. Tony DeFiti and Gordon Jones, along with Kevin Hughes, play that left halfback position. Getting the start here in the second half is Tony DeFiti. First and ten farmers as we begin the third quarter of play. Tony Bibbo straight up the middle gets maybe a yard on the play. Good penetration by the middle of that Elizabeth defense and some help from Rodney Carter who came up from his linebacker position. Elizabeth has allowed only 61 points all year. 6.1 per game coming into tonight's contest. Their defensive unit, Kevin Johnson, Terry Devlin, Willis Wooten, Ed Miller, and Bernard Woodley are the front five. David Tobe and Rodney Carter, the linebackers. The deep backs, Ernie Hernandez and James Drayton, the corners. Bright and Pryor are the safeties. Second down and eight for the Union Farmers from their own 22-yard line out of the wing eye. Albert Smith, the tailback. Smith gets the call. Albert Smith gets to the 28-yard line. And Albert Smith has really not broken out yet tonight. No, he hasn't. They, they've taken the outside game away from uh, Union by by jamming at the line of scrimmage with their cornerbacks. Here we see that he comes back inside at the following Bibbo's lead block and uh, gets nice yardage on the inside. Gives him a third and two situation. Third and two, Union did not have much success in the first half on third down conversion. Two tight ends, out of the eye. Smith, good penetration, he's dumped in the backfield and James Drayton made the stop and James Drayton among the most highly recruited players in New Jersey. He wants to go to Nebraska. It's just a matter of time before we find out. But Drayton came up from his right cornerback position and number 45 really stung Albert Smith. All right, he's coming from outside in. There's nobody there to pick him up. And he leads right on through and makes a tremendous hit along with the nose guard coming in from good, good penetration in the middle. And they stuffed him for a yard loss in the backfield. Fourth down, and Union will have to punt it away. Bohannon back in punt formation. Bright and strong waiting for the ball. Bohannon hits it straight down the field. Takes a bounce at the 46-yard line and will go out of bounds at the 42. So Elizabeth's defense, again, has given the offense good field position, and that offense has been explosive tonight. As you can see, they lead 14 to zip. The Elizabeth interior line, Terry Devlin, Ernie Hernandez, Ob Obadiah Dreyer, James Matino and Eddie Miller. The tight end is Bernard Woodley. The split end, Teddy Porter. Quarterback, Jerome Baker. His fullback, who had two touchdowns in the first half, Rodney Carter. Tailback, Barry Hunter. The Z-back is Javier Montanez. From the 42, the Minutemen have a first and 10. In motion goes Willis Wooten. Pitch back to Rodney Carter. Carter cuts inside the 45. Curry there to make the tackle for Union as, as he got up near the 46-yard line. The Union 4-4 defense, front line, Greg Curry, Tom Wilk, Paul Gruchez, Chris Lafragola, linebackers Tony DeFiti, Todd Drew, Kevin Schroeder, and Al Smith. Deep backs Ken Disco, Tony Queen, and Kevin Hughes. Second down and five for the Minutemen. Elizabeth with 2,823 yards rushing this year. That includes 
tonight's performance, that's a lot of yards by any team. Yeah, they, they are a good ground team with big play potential. Offensive line is doing a tremendous job for them. Tremendous surge on the off the ball. Larry Bright wide to the left. In motion goes Carter. Montanez gets the handoff and he is stopped. Real good penetration that time by Union. And in particular, the man making the stop was Todd Drew, who did it all on his own. Yeah, he got under the surge that time, found a crack in the seam there, and stuck his head and shoulders in and made a stop for, after a two-yard gain. So it is third down and three. This is where Elizabeth has been so tough tonight on third down conversions. Wing right. Baker pitches back to Carter. Carter, close to a first down. The thing that impressed me about Baker in that last play is he waited till the last possible moment before he pitched it back. Now, I'll tell you what it did. It froze the defensive end or the outside linebacker who made the play, but it also froze Tony Queen, the safety man, who was waiting to see who what he was going to do with the ball. And it made Queen a step too late to stop the pitch before it, it got the first down. That's what Dan Cercelli of Springfield did so well in the game we saw him on Thanksgiving, holding the ball, deceiving, waiting to the last possible second, then pitching it back, and it resulted in a first down. First and 10 at the 48. Carter straight up the middle. You know, Carter just gets the ball and just follows that big line and just keeps on plugging and gets four or five. Yeah, they, the offensive line does not just block at the line of scrimmage. Their surge has been tremendous. They've been moving people not only laterally, but forward and backward as well. Carter tonight, 87 yards, 6.2 per carry, two touchdowns. Injured Union player on the far side of the field. Dr. Fred Beagle will come on to take a look at him. Don't forget this Thursday night, we will have a visitor from this same facility. His name, Gary Jeter, big number 70, the defensive end for the Giants. He will join us on Time In. That's live this Thursday at 6.30. Your comments and questions welcome. We'll talk to the gentle giant. When I mean he is a beautiful individual, he is exactly that. Spends a lot of time working with the Special Olympics. He's an honorary captain, and we cornered him over at the Special Olympic program being held at the Mayfair Farms a couple of weeks ago. And he is what one lady described, a giant teddy bear. Yeah, where are you going to get a chair big enough for that giant teddy bear? Well, we'll try to find one. The Union cheerleaders still cheering, but their club on the short end of a 14-0 ball game right now. Uh, Injured Greg, player is Greg Curry. Greg Curry, right. He's the left end, and I would imagine we're going to see Charlie Bohannon there in his place, and that's exactly who steps in. So Bohannon moves to left end. Second and five for the Elizabeth Minutemen, 7.50 on the clock. Third quarter, Elizabeth leading 14 to nothing. Jerome Baker calling signals, hands the ball to Carter. This time Rodney runs into a couple of people, namely Al Smith, and also in on the stop for the Farmers. Number 20, Kevin Hughes playing a fine football game. Third down and two again. We talked about the third down conversions. They've been in third down two, but they've also been third and eight and third and nine, and they've made the first downs on those type of conversion too. Curry appears to be okay. Looks looks to have the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Wide to the right now, Larry Bright. Willis Wooten getting a lot of work offensively for the Minutemen. And Wooten goes in motion. And a good hit at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Schroeder and Paul Gruchez. And they stop that Elizabeth attack right at the line of scrimmage, and Montanez had nowhere to go in this one. Uh, try to counter pitch and come back here to Montanez, and really on this play, he really got popped. That's the best hit Union's had all day. Maybe they can build a fire under themselves defensively from that type of play. Kevin Schroeder and Paul Gruchez. Fourth down, and back in punt formation, Tony Grace for the Minutemen. Kevin Hughes and Tony Queen deep for Union. This is something everyone was talking about before the game, the fact that Union blocked their punts earlier this year. And this time Grace gets it away and he puts it into the end zone. So the ball will come out to the 20-yard line and with 6.07 to go in this third quarter of play and Elizabeth leading 14 to nothing. Union will have it first and 10. 
Al Smith came close to blocking that one. Hello, everybody. Al Smith gave it the big rush. They talked. I talked to the union coaches again, as I said before the ball game, and they mentioned that. Uh, oh, there, Mr. Smith. Uh, they they thought they could still get to that punt, and they were going to give it the old try today again. Al shaking up a little bit. He's replaced by Gordon Jones. Union has scored 244 points this season, but tonight they have zero. LaRusso calling signals. Defeaty and Gordon Jones both in their bibbo, straight up the middle and gets to the 25. Interesting setup that time by Union, putting both halfbacks to one side, both blocking different ways, and Bibbo coming right through the hole. Now that was that special offensive set they put in on this play. They see them clearing down. Bibbo gets through there real quickly, but I'll tell you, a nice hit there by uh, Ernie Hernandez. That cornerback comes up and really pops. Hey, he's playing some game, yes, isn't he? Yes, he is. Ernie Hernandez, number 65, 10, 201 pounds, a senior. Coach Don Soma says that he is a sharp, mature young man, a very good student. He is a leader, and he's also crazy. That's a nice combination. All that, all that boils down to is one solid football player. That's, that's for sure. There's Ernie Hernandez. He goes both ways, plays left cornerback and left guard. It's nice to have a cornerback who has the size of a guard, isn't it? Well, that makes a physical person out there. He is physical. Both the corners are playing extremely well. They're, they've got a lot of responsibility in this game because they're right up on the line of scrimmage, and if they do throw, they're going to have to get back. The Union has yet to throw the football except for the one Michael pass that was we talked about earlier. Don Soma's defense, and especially that secondary, the key. He calls the secondary soul. Well, up front must be hard then. 5.40 in the clock. Union will have a second down and five from the 25. Union's offense has been held in check for most of the evening. There's Donnie Soma, head coach of the Minutemen. We got an official's time out here for something. If referee just went over and talked to a security guard. And while we have the time out, mentioned Donnie Soma's assistants, Kirk Hamra, Bobby Teresco, Bill Nagy, Pete Kowalski, Tony Bruno, Bruno, I should say, Bill Von B, Jimmy O'Halloran, and Ben Candelino all have done super jobs, according to the coach, this year. LaRusso hands the ball off to Bibbo, who turns his way to the 28, and it will bring up a third and two, and once again, Union will have a third down opportunity and they have not been very successful in these situations tonight. Uh, the special said again, he tried to come a little bit further inside on this play, and it was good penetration by the nose guard, Willis Wooten and uh, Ed Miller and uh, Tony to David Tobe. Kind of stacked that thing up before it really had a chance to develop. Al Smith back in the ball game in the tailback position. Two tight ends again, Lafragola and Bohannon. The handoff to Al Smith puts his head down and is short of the first down. Toe in on the tackle. Hernandez close by. Rodney Carter close by. Bernard Woodley sticking his head in. It is fourth and one from the 29, and Lou Rotino is going to go for it. I've seen him go for it in the same stadium from his own 21-yard line back in the 79 championship game and make it. Union, one for five on third down conversions. This will be their first fourth down opportunity. Crowd coming alive, fourth and inches. LaRusso calling signals, fumbles the football. Elizabeth recovers, but a flag is down on the play. Flag down on the play, dead ball foul. Offsides against Elizabeth, it will give Union a first down. I remarked earlier in the first half that I thought they had seen that several times in short yard situations. What it is is the standing linebackers come right up onto the line of scrimmage and they might put their hands into the neutral zone anticipating a stuff. We can't quite see it there, but but uh, we see that the... Oh, I, the I see it. Yeah, it was the man who was right on the center's nose who did it. He, he was right across at the time. It was a standing linebacker because they were in an unbalanced defense. The linebacker stepped in there. First down Union, a little bit of breathing room at the 35. 353, third quarter, 7-0. Rather, 14-0, Elizabeth leading. 
Here's LaRusso running off to the right side. Hernandez turns the play up and pushes LaRusso out of bounds. He used that defensive cornerback's best friend, and that's the sideline. You don't even have to knock, knock the man down if you just drive him across the white line. LaRusso, who's been bothered by a sore ankle the last couple of days, going the entire route tonight. He was injured in the Westfield game with the ankle injury, sent out the last one, and he's getting the nod tonight. He showed the uh, ankle injury on that play. I thought he was going to be able to break it back inside the lead block, inside of Hernandez, but he couldn't. He just couldn't push off on that ankle. A pick of a four, second and six at the 38. Gibbo stopped by Willis Wooten. The nose man came busting through and he got Tony Bibbo early and made a fine play. We've talked through the year about how easier, much easier. Here we see great penetration, but we see a whole a host of people making that penetration that you wouldn't ordinarily find there. Safety man, corner man, linebacker. We talked earlier in the season about when the team knows you're going to throw the ball, how easy it is to rush the passer. You know what I mean? They can fire out and mm -hmm. take off. All right, when a team knows you're not going to throw the ball, it makes it that much easier for the secondary. They can play run, they can gamble, they can overcommit, and this is exactly what Elizabeth is doing. Mark Herzfeld goes wide to the left. Hand off to Tony Pivo, straight ahead. Bernard Woodley made the tackle near the 40-yard line. It brings up a fourth down and five from the 39-yard line, and Union getting a bit conservative in that last drive. Yeah, you would figure with that field position, they might let something out of the bag, but Bernard Woodley did a super job on that time. His technique was to pinch and close down inside the deep offensive end into the tackle, and he did exactly that. That's where the play was designed to run, and he was in there to stuff it. Charlie Bohannon drops back in punt formation, punting away to a couple of speedsters. Robbie Strong and Larry Bright. It's handled by Larry Bright. Across the 45, across the 50, and Larry Bright down to the Union 48. A fine return by number one Larry Bright, a 5'11", 170-pound senior, who has been absolutely explosive this entire season. As soon as, as, soon as this ball is kicked, I said to myself, this is trouble because he got it the front point down, a line drive kick. He caught it on the drive, and he caught it before the coverage could get down there, split the coverage, which was good if the ball had been high and did a real fine job on the return. Bright going into today's game, 13 returns for 224 yards and two touchdowns. Jerome Baker leads out the Minutemen, first and 10 from the 48. He hands off to Rodney Carter. Carter breaks a couple of tackles, gets down near the 40-yard line. Two minutes to go in this third quarter of play, and Elizabeth continues to churn, continues to burn, and continues to dominate. Now we had an unfortunate situation there for Union. Carter took a real fine job on that run, super run. The Union had two people who could have made the tackle in the backfield, either one of them, but they collided with each other. That was Drew, who's being helped off now, and Gruchas, and they, either one of them could have made the tackle, but they hit each other, and Rodney got away and made good yardage on the play. Freddie Beekel checking out Todd Drew, who leads the team in tackles. Drew's been bothered by injuries much of the season also. It's, just, it's hampered his going both ways. Minutemen said Teddy Porter wide to the left, out of the eye formation. And off to Barry Hunter. Hunter straight up the middle, has a first down at the 35. Right, they're taking advantage of, of Union's gambling now. Union has gambled on the last two plays and blitzed an inside linebacker. That time it was Tony Bibbo, who was in replacement for Todd Drew. And they just guessed the wrong gap, and Elizabeth's taking advantage of it and getting into the secondary, with making the deep people make the tackle since the linebacker has vacated. First and 10 at the 35. Jerome Baker barking signals, hands to Hunter again. Hunter slips away from one man and is finally run out of bounds by Tony Queen. Hunter bouncing off a couple of people, slipping free. Pick up of two yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight. 
Boy, slipping, slipping is the correct adjective in that case. He, he really slipped right away from three or four people who had a shot at him. They're tough. They're elusive backs with great power and great speed. Billy Ludoff checks into that Union backfield now, defensive backfield. He replaces Kevin Hughes. Elizabeth with 23 seconds to go in this third quarter of play. A second down and eight at the Union 33. Hand off to Carter. Carter at the 15, he's gone. Touchdown. Number three for Rodney Carter. And that one came on the same play as they ran the first one. With 11 seconds left in the third quarter, Elizabeth has another touchdown. A fake pitch, and he comes right back on the counter again. And it's a horse race. And he has just got a head start that won't, you won't believe. Great running for him. Just not going to catch him. High stepping all the way in. He is some athlete. Rodney Carter with his third TD. Dan Takera will try the point after touchdown. Two for two tonight. Ball plays down. The kick is up. It is good. All right, with that offensive set they're using, Bruce, they're forcing Union to overcommit the secondary to the wingback side of the formation, and they're splitting the left end so extra wide that it, there's nobody left there. They got single coverage on him, double coverage on the other side, and there's nobody left in the middle when they beat that first linebacker. If we call it the middle of the defensive formation center field, they, they're overshifted for a left-handed pull hitter. Well, Don Soma told me that this is a totally different ball game, that his club is totally prepared, and they are playing some kind of football game. 21 to nothing. Elizabeth leads with 11 seconds left in the third quarter. Rodney Carter with his third touchdown of the night. And that offensive line is really doing some kind of job. Terry Devlin, Ernie Hernandez, Obadiah Dreyer, James Matino, Eddie Miller in the tight end, Bernard Woodley. Tony Queen fields the kickoff at the 15 across the 20 and gets to the 22. The Elizabeth scoring drive, five plays, 52 yards, and Carter going 33 yards for the touchdown. Nice coverage downfield on that kickoff by Rob Strong, number three, who made an ankle tackle and broke up that play. That is it. The end of three quarters of play from Giant Stadium. The score, Elizabeth, 21, Union, nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of play in just a moment. There's the story of the game so far. Rodney Carter, 17 rushes, 131 yards, 7.7 .7 per carry, all three touchdowns. Elizabeth leading Union 21 to nothing. Cosmo LaRusso back to throw for the Farmers. LaRusso running out of the pocket, gets back across the 22, finally dragged down by Ed Miller, the 6'3", 220-pound senior. Well, Union's trying to open up their bag now. That was supposed to be the pass, but the pass was covered, and he had to pull it down and run. Uh, Rodney Carter plays the most unlikely defensive position. Here we see the, the waggle action. He's got the ball up ready to throw, but the pressure right there from, from uh, the nose guard was too great, and he gets caught on the backside by uh, Miller. Uh, the unlikely position of inside linebacker for Rodney Carter. You don't really find too many tailbacks in an I formation playing the inside linebacker position defensively. Second down and eight. Cosmo LaRusso back to throw, completes it to Gordon Jones, who has a first down across the 32-yard line. Tremendous defensive pursuit by the Elizabeth team. Nine people around the ball at the tackle. Nine people. For a moment there, it looked like Jones might have broken this one, too. Uh, yes, so a game-saving jersey tackle here. Holds him up until the other people get there. But look at them come hustling over. Great catch there by Jones. He keeps his feet and keeps driving. But there are a lot of black shirts there around the ball at the end. James Drayton, nice tackle. That's the cornerback we spoke so highly of earlier. First down for Union at their own 34. 10.50 to go. Union trailing by 21 points. Albert Smith breaks a couple of tackles, still going. Gets up near the 40-yard line. 
it'll be second down and three. Albert, Albert had, had to break one tackle, then another tackle, then another tackle, about four of them all together, because Elizabeth people, they come at you like flies. They're all over you. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, they are really a swarm gang tackling defense. Every coach wants to hear the fact that five or six men are on every play. Well, they've got it. Hasbro LaRusso now, second down and five. In motion, Kevin Hughes, hand off to Bibbo. Big hole, and Bibbo blasts his way to the 49-yard line of Elizabeth. Uh, that's the first time we've seen them break it back into the secondary as quickly as that all, all day. This is from the unbalanced to the two-tackle side of the formation with the lead blocker, Smith, coming through, picking up the linebacker, and Bibbo's on to the safety man before the safety man, Wayne Pryor, before he knows what's happening. I'd like to see Bibbo's stats in the night because he is still getting his yardage in different spots, still working hard. Timeout taken by Elizabeth. 9.53 to go in this fourth quarter of play. Elizabeth leading 21 to nothing, and Don Soma just wants to go out there and tell his players that this is still a football game. We're not going to allow any points. We're going to dig in. And Lou Retaino on the other side telling his union players that we've got to start executing quickly if we're going to get back in this ball game. Yeah, I was about to say that. If they're going to if they're going to get it back in the game, that's the kind of run they need. Several of those in a row. Not two, not three, but they need tens and twelves and, and several of those in the drive. The union cheerleaders not totally flustered yet. Hoping that their club can still put together a drive. First and ten at the fifty. Bibbo goes in motion. LaRusso back to throw. And I believe we may get a motion call against Union for Bibbo to release before the snap just by a half a second. You got him. It'll be first and 15. Tony Bibbo tonight, 12 rushes, 56 yards, so he's still getting his yardage. Yes, he is. He's, aver he's up to his average. He's a tough customer, I'll tell you. It doesn't matter who he plays. He's not intimidated by anybody. He's a hard-nosed young man. He's an outstanding young man, an outstanding person. And he's going to be an outstanding baseball player in the spring for Gordon Lomati. Bibbo goes in motion. First and 15, Cosmo LaRusso sets up, has time, sets up a swing pass, and oh, what a defensive play by Kevin Johnson. He anticipated the pass to Chris Lafragola, came up to make the stop. Kevin Johnson, 6'3", 197 pound senior, and what a dandy of a play this was. Uh, this drop back action with a motion away, trying to defensive, cause the secondary to rotate, but here we'll see that he was being blocked, Kevin was being blocked that time, by the lead guard coming out on him, or Kevin Schroeder, and he just fought his way through the block and made the tackle. Super defensive play. So it brings up a second down and 25 to go for the Union Farmers. 8.55 to go in this fourth quarter. Elizabeth leading 21 to nothing. LaRusso, play action pass, rolling to his right, being pressured, and he will go down. No contest, there's Rodney Carter. Rodney Carter and Willis Wooten in to make the stop, and it is a big, big loss. Again, tremendous pressure from the nose, and this time from the right linebacker, Rodney Carter. He just busts through the block, down the line, and gets a hold of the shoulder pads and takes him on down, and Wooten's there to give him some help. Personal foul called against Union. The play refused by Elizabeth, and for good reason. Yeah, that was more than 15 they lost on that play. It is now third and 35 for the Union Farmers. This is a drive that they had hoped might get them back in the bowl game. Instead, with 8.39 to go, they are looking at a disastrous third down situation. Bibbo Smith and Kevin Hughes in the backfield. Cosmo LaRusso calling signals. Hands the ball to Al Smith, and the play is snowed under. Again, the penetration was quick. It came from the nose man, Willis Wooten. 
Some help on the play from Terry Devlin, and it brings up a fourth down, and Union will have to punt it away from their own 24-yard line. And that man, Don Soma, head coach of the Minutemen, is happy and finally smiling. Well, almost. It was a half a smile. And yeah, Louis. Louis, Louis, on the other hand, I guess disappointed would be a good word to describe him right now. Bohannon back to punt on fourth down. Low snap. Bohannon still gets it away. It's a good punt. Goes back to the 20, picked up at the 15 by Rob Strong. Strong returns it to the 20. Defeaty makes the tackle. A little extra mustard on that tackle and tempers flare just a bit. We have a flag down on the play. Personal foul against Elizabeth. So that will move it back half the distance. 7.33 left in the game. Elizabeth leading Union by a score of 21 to nothing. They have scored a touchdown in each of the first three quarters. That's pretty good balance. Yeah, and you know, it's too bad we had that little skirmish right there. We took away from the fact that the boy just kicked the ball about 80 yards, almost something in the neighborhood of 80 yards on that play. Uh, and they had good coverage on it besides. Don't forget, we've got collegiate basketball coming up on TV3 with the Manhattan Jaspers meeting the unbeaten Seton Hall Pirates at Walsh Auditorium, and you can catch all the play-by-play -play Wednesday evening at 10.30. Eddie Lyons and I will be over at Walsh Auditorium to bring you the play-by-play -play of Manhattan and Seton Hall on TV3. And also, we will have the Rutgers Lady Knights and the Seton Hall Buckets, the preliminary game to the one that you just saw, and that one you can see 8.30 p.m. Wednesday evening. Rutgers comes in with a powerful team rolling off a big victory over UCLA at the Burn Arena on Thursday night. So it should be a dandy of a doubleheader, and don't forget, Thursday, we have Gary Jeter in the studio to talk football with us, and we welcome your phone calls at 6.30 on Thursday on Time In, only on TV3. Well, the Union cheerleaders and fans still sticking to their banner, sticking to their guns. But it has been a one-sided football game. And I am very impressed with the Elizabeth Minutemen. They yep. have hit. They have played crisp football. They have executed extremely well. And they've got a burner in the backfield, Rodney Carter. Yeah, they've shown a lot of people a lot of things today. Jerome Baker sends wide to the right, Teddy Porter. Baker hands the ball off to Carter. Carter gets to the 25. Well, I saw all three football games today, or bits and pieces of them. We saw Pasek win soundly and Brick win soundly, but I haven't been impressed with any team as much as Elizabeth. No, Elizabeth has shown me more than any team out here today, in spite of what the ratings that people have. Brick was not very big. No. And not all that quick. No, nothing compared to this team right here. I thought Pasek was a very good football team. Yes, Pasek was good. They they uh, they executed very well as also offensively and defensively. But this Elizabeth team has played some kind of sound game. Carter goes in motion to the left. Hand off in the backfield to Martin Yeds, and he is hit hard by Paul Gruchez and Tom Wilk. Wilk, a three-year performer who most definitely will go on to play for some major school at the end of this season. All right, they run the unbalanced side to the left this time and tried to dive play, but they both made good penetration. There we see them come right down the line, the second hit coming on, and Kevin Schroeder gets in there on the play as well. Gruchez is playing a pretty tough game in that line. Yes. Elizabeth has been most effective when they've run their unbalanced, the long side to their right, and run at that or run the counter back to their left behind uh, Devlin and Hernandez has been exceptionally fine play for them. Third down and 14. Baker sprinting out, going to the air, throws and it's incomplete. Had a man open, but he could not connect. 
pass intended for Willis Wooten. It brings up a fourth down. And Tony Grace will come on to punt for the Minutemen. 6.14 to go and a 21-0 lead for Elizabeth. And if Union's ever going to try to block a punt, they would have to try and do it right here. Yeah, I think that we'll see if they've been working on it. They worked, tried to get the one, and Al Smith just missed the first time. It's hard to believe that going into this final game, though, this is only the second punt of the day for, for Elizabeth. Back to punt, Grace. Tony Queen, Kevin Hughes waiting for it. Good blocking, and Grace gets it away with no problem. Bounces at the 43. Handled by Hughes. Kevin returns it to the 45 of Elizabeth, and that is all. Union will have it first and 10 at the Elizabeth 45. If they're going to strike, they're going to have to do it quickly with 6.02 remaining in the football game. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone involved with the telecast from Giant Stadium point of view. Jim Menich, Director of Stadium Operations. Also to Stan Gorlick, the media coordinator. And of course, so many other people involved with the production from Giant Stadium point of view. Clark Folsom, of course, running the game from the state and JSIAA and doing a marvelous job again. We'd like to pass along our thanks to security guards and everyone involved in Giant Stadium operations for their help in conjunction with today's telecast. 5.30 remaining, second down and six for the Union Farmers at their own 41. Five fourteen and counting down. Cosmo LaRusso calling signals, sends Mark Hersfeld wide to the left. LaRusso, play action pass in trouble, and Willis Wooten gets him. Willis Wooten has played some kind of second half. Yes, he has. He's been all over the backfield for uh, Elizabeth uh, Minutemen. Here, good, good penetration. He defeats the block in the center of the guard, comes back through into the sec, into the backfield, and gets his arms around. LaRusso just can't throw the ball. He has no place to throw it. Great pressure. Third and 15. 435 and counting down. Hersfeld wide left out of the eye again for the Union Farmers. Cosmo LaRusso dropping back, steps in, and he goes down. Big pressure again from that front five. And Elizabeth continues Anthony to McCall. dominate. Anthony McCall at nose guard now, 6'1", 283 pounds. He just bowls over everybody, pushes blockers aside, as we see right here, gets his hands on and smothers. Boy, he came ready to play in that play, didn't he? he? Yes, he did. They took they took the little nose guard out and put the big brother in. Now the little fella's back in again. 3.44 to go. Bohannon to punt for Union on fourth down. Charlie hits another dandy. Handled by Robbie Strong, and Strong returns it across the 30, across the 35, and finally goes down. Flag on the play to 29. My goodness sakes, he doesn't know when it's time to quit. Rob Strong, Dick, coming into today's game, 41 touches of the football, 926 yards. That includes rushes, punt returns, kickoff return, and receptions. Penalty against Union, that will mark off 15 more yards. This is what we were, I was referring to in the beginning of the game about the special teams play. Elizabeth's special teams have been big gainers for them and put their offense in good field position all the time. And when they haven't scored. First and 10 from the 50 for a minute, men. Three twenty to go. Straight up the middle goes Barry Hunter, and the six two and a half, one ninety four pound senior gets to the forty five. Three minutes and counting down. Lou Rotino and his staff have been turned away in their attempt to win their third state championship in four years. 
certainly he's proud of his team and proud of his staff that have worked hard throughout the season. Jim Benedict, Fred Stengel, Jeff Longiel, Jack Freeman, Jack DeBarbiere, and Richard Stegeman. Trainer, Christopher Flynn, and team physician, Freddie Beekle, and the athletic director, Walt Shalcross. All of those people involved with putting together the team effort all season long. They've had a marvelous season, but tonight they were simply outmatched by an Elizabeth football team that came to play and played some kind of football game. They have dominated the game. Well, they've been quick, they're strong, and they've done a real fine job. Offensive line's been good, the backs have run well, defense has played well. Baker rolling out, looking, throws, and he throws complete. Down to the 25-yard line for another first down for the Elizabeth Minutemen, and pulling down that reception, Teddy Porter. And they've thrown well. Porter, nine receptions this year, 180 yards and four TDs. He's dangerous. They haven't really needed him tonight. They haven't had to go to the air. But they do have another first down at the 26 of Union with two minutes to go. The faking, the, the deception on that last play was good. There's Out, the story of the game. Outstanding. The Elizabeth backfield, 6.3 per carry, 241 yards and three touchdowns. A Union hasn't given up that much all year in any game. Those look like Union statistics in the last couple of games. That's right. Getting the call is Hunter. Hunter turning the corner, 15, 10. Hunter out of bounds at the five yard line. He just ran over a, a tackler at about the 20. Elizabeth continuing to execute. <laughs> 139 to play. Minutemen marching on the door again. Porter wide right, out of the I formation. Hunter gets the call, Hunter looking to turn the corner. Albert Smith gets a hand on him and Billy Ludoff pulls him out of bounds with a minute 33 to play. Uh, they, they haven't been able to pick up anything outside over there on, the, on Smith's side. Uh, you got good support that time from Ludoff. Even with the lead blocker, they did nice job. They built the fence on the line of scrimmage and let the back come to them. I would think at this point of the bowl game, he would, Donnie Soma and his staff would be content with just running out the clock and finishing it up. But they're looking for more points. Either that or they're just executing so well that they're continuing to march. Baker rolls to his right. Now he's gonna throw the ball. Throws incomplete. Tended for Carter, who would have had his fourth touchdown. Brings up a third and goal from the nine. Surprised he threw the football there, Dick. I really think he would put it on the ground. Well, was, he came out with a pass run option on that thing, and the quarter, and quarterback did have the option to run or pass, but in, in the end zone, Carter was wide open. There was, there was nobody near him at all. I want to uh, thank our staff, by the way, that has worked with us all season long and a great bunch of people. We'll name some of the key people for you in a moment. Jerome Baker on third down and nine from the nine. Back to pass again, throws and it's incomplete. Our director, Ed De Palma, who has done such a marvelous job all season long, he's in charge of picking all those different shots. And he is in charge of the flow of the game from the beginning to the end. Our technical director, Bill Lester and Nick Bacangeli, who have really worked together in setting up this remote here at Giant Stadium and have been the heart and soul of our outfit for the entire season. And our technical director tonight, Kip Rowan. Field goal attempt here for Danny Takera. He will try a field goal from the 16, make it 26 yards, and it is off to the left side, no good, and Union will get it at his own 20. Also, Greg Vandervoort, our director of replays tonight, 
and our tape operator and John Elkowitz, who's done just a marvelous job in audio all season long, and to our fearless crew on graphics, Mike Butler and Gary Carfagna, who flash up the key graphics for you all during the game and are under a tremendous amount of pressure and always come through in flying colors. Our AD, Assistant Director Ed Heaton, who is flawless with the stopwatch, and our camera crew, Jim Massey, Joe Ippolito, Horace Manley, and Reba Sassio. Here's Albert Smith getting the call for the Union Farmers on first down, bucks across to the 32. A good job there by Smitty. They got nice little cross blocking there and the uh, weak side of the formation and brought him right up inside after a little counter. Picked up good yardage on the play. Didn't want to take anything away from the Elizabeth Minutemen, but these people who have worked for the 12-week season and have worked and gotten up every Saturday morning at 6 o'clock uh, deserve those accolades. And it's been a pleasure working with them, let me say that. LaRusso back to throw, swings one out for Bibbo, incomplete across the 40-yard line, 50 seconds remaining in the football game. Elizabeth leading Union by a score of 21 to nothing. And Elizabeth will be the new champion in North Jersey Section 2, Group 4. Union winning the crown in 78 and 79, West Essex in 80, and now Elizabeth in 81. Flashback to the glory days of Gil Chapman in 1970. Don Soma getting congratulations from his assistant coaches. And off to Al Smith, gets back to the 35. And that is all. Elizabeth will finish with five out of seven shutouts. Five out of the last seven games, six shutouts overall. Defensive unit didn't allow but 61 points all season long. They came to play today very quick. They sure did come to play. Fifteen seconds left in the 1981 high school football season. It's all academic now. Albert Smith gets the toss. With five seconds, he goes out of bounds with just four seconds to go. We'll take a break, come back with the post-game show immediately following this ball game. Our congratulations go to the Caldwell Chiefs. Winners in North Jersey Section 2, Group 3, to the Seton Hall Pirates. Winners in North Jersey Parochial A and the Kenilworth Bears. Winners in North Jersey Section 2, Group 1. All from the TV3 area. We do not know the results of the South River game at this point in our telecast, but we do know that those other schools were victorious in their quest for state crowns. Just missed the first down by the length of the football, perhaps. And of course, with fourth and one, they'll be going for it. Four seconds to go. Elizabeth scoring touchdowns in quarters number one, two, and three. And Rodney Carter scoring on runs of 23 and 33 yards, and that was all she wrote. Tremendous play from their offensive line, Devlin Hernandez, Dreyer, Matino, and Miller. And sound, sound execution. Last play of the 1981 high school football season. And the final score, Elizabeth 21, Union nothing. Elizabeth wins it all in North Jersey Section 2, Group 4. Short break, back with the post-game show in a moment. Feels. It feels good, you know. I, we, I, I needed this since I, don't, I was dreaming about this for so long. It just feel like 
when you know how you feel when you get married, that's what it is. Just, you know, your heart beats so good. I just don't know what to do. Willis, what do you think the major difference was in this football game? I knew we was going to beat them because, like they say, paybacks are a bitch. And we paid them back. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Ernie Hernandez, who also played an outstanding game at cornerback and as an offensive lineman. And first of all, the offensive line, I thought, did a super job. Yes. Fratino said he had the stronger line. But I think we proved out here, out in the Meadowlands, who had the stronger, top, who had the stronger line and who, who wanted it more. I think we wanted it more. Since January, we had this. Since January, it says right here, see you in the Meadowlands. We wanted it. We wanted it. That's the only thing that stopped, didn't stop us. We wanted it. That's all. Congratulations. Thank you. All Ernie right. Hernandez, who did an outstanding job. Rodney Carter, here was the offensive star of the football game. He had three touchdowns. How does it feel, Rodney? Feel good. Feel good. Yeah. Real good. We've been working at it since the summertime, the winter time, and we're going to keep going forward. It was togetherness who won this game. Everybody stayed together. Everybody. Congratulations, big guy. Thank you. Rodney Carter with three touchdowns. Coach Don Soma, coach, you've been working for this one a long time. You said toss out the other games. This is the only one that matters. You've been improving rapidly. How do you feel about the win? Probably the greatest victory I've ever been associated with in, in uh, 14 years as a coach and a lot of years as a player. I'm lucky enough to have the greatest staff in the state of New Jersey. We worked our butts off. We broke down every film, every play that they ran since day one, okay? We went back to two years ago and we worked all the way through. Our coaches worked their butts off and it was just a great game. What else could I say? You know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, you know, uh, not to take nothing against Coach Lou Rutino. He's a great coach. He's been here three times, like he said, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, when you use the word best, that means somebody wants to be better. And he used the word best, you know, about his best linebackers, his best running backs, and our kids took it personal. And, you know, I'm sure Coach Rutino's kids love him, and I'm sure our kids are excited tonight. And, and you know, maybe tomorrow we might feel bad for some things we said. But, we, you know, this game was motivational, and, and, and we played with emotion. And, and, and today... I think if the uh, Star Ledger uh, has to go at, back and recount their votes on who's number one, because you ought to just look at who played the most teams in the top ten, who scored the most points against the teams in the top ten, and we deserve some votes. Congratulations, Thank you Donnie. Enjoy much. the victory. And maybe now we'll be on your top ten. Okay, Don Soma, head coach of the Elizabeth Minutemen. Let's recap the scoring for you. All the touchdowns were by Rodney Carter. Rodney Carter's first touchdown, a beautiful run, 34 yards. It put the Minutemen up 7 to nothing. It capped an 11-play, 95-yard drive. Takara added the point after Minutemen on the board by a score of 7-zip, 448 remaining in the first quarter of play, and Elizabeth well on their way. Elizabeth on the board again in the second quarter of play as Carter goes in from the three-yard line, a twisting, spinning kind of a run, and the Minutemen went into the locker room at halftime up by a score of 14 to nothing as Danny Takara added the point after. Third quarter and Rodney Carter's third touchdown, a 33-yard run, a beautiful cut against the grain, and Carter breaking clear, running ahead of everyone and going in for the six points. Let's go back and look at those three touchdowns just for a moment. Here's the first touchdown. You can see Carter breaking against the grain, going to his left, getting some good downfield blocking, then just high-stepping his way into the end zone, knowing he had the score, and it was that interior line again throwing some key blocks on the play that enabled Carter to go in for the touchdown and put the minimum up seven zip. Second touchdown, you see it from the end zone, and what a spinning run. There's one spin. You can see him spinning a second time, and then the third time. He only went in three yards, but he made it on a couple of fine individual moves. Takara again added the point after. And here's that third touchdown again. Carter breaking clear, running straight down the middle. Nobody near him, going 33 yards, using his speed. And that was all she wrote as the Elizabeth Minuteman win it by a score of 21 to nothing and capture the North Jersey Section 2 Group 4 State Championship. And Dick Zimmer, your thoughts on the victory by Elizabeth tonight. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They controlled the uh, union offense, both at the line of scrimmage and in the in the backfield with the great penetration and the linebackers blitzing. Uh, too quick, too strong, too fast for union tonight. Well, that ends the season. I enjoyed working with you. Look forward to doing it again next year. Hey, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. 11 games. They've been all great ones, and uh, I look forward to being back and 
my wishes for a great holiday season for everybody on the crew. We'd like to thank all the athletic directors and schools who participated in our coverage of high school sports this fall for their thanks, and we'd like to pass along our cooperation uh, and thank everybody involved in watching TV3's coverage of high school sports this fall season. That's it for Dick Zimmer. I'm Bruce Vex, and a good night from Giant Stadium, the final again. Elizabeth, 21, Union, nothing.